What is going on, family? Let's get this thing started. Let me make sure the chat is correct. Get up in here real quick, man. Got a um, Avengers Endgame review. It's an open uh, hangout for the guys who've seen the movie thus far. But first and foremost, I want to say rest in peace to the great legendary director, John Singleton, who I actually met in L.A. in 2007 at a film festival for black filmmakers. Really good, brother. Um, learned a whole lot from the brother. Um, we was we was with him for maybe about, I think John might spoke for at least two to three hours. At least, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm being about two and a half hours. He spoke on just the filmmaking, the craft and everything. And real good dude, man. Um, I believe I might have a picture with him somewhere or my director at the time. She might have a picture with us together. But uh, real good brother, man. Real good brother. Uh, great loss. Uh, real strong brother. Classic movies like Boys in the Hood, um, Poetic Justice. He did a whole bunch of good movies, man. Real good movies, man. He really broke down the crap of filmmaking. So I know if he would did a master class, man, people would have been really shocked about his depth of filmmaking, man. He really broke it down. Uh, <clears throat> I believe he lived across the street. He told us a story about him living across the street from a drive-in movie theater and how he was really fascinated as a young child about uh, drive-in you know, movies. And he really honed his craft by watching uh, westerns, watching like Clint Eastwood movies. And if you watch Boys in the Hood, he broke down the comparisons of um, Boys in the Hood with uh, westerns. And he was showing just different you know, angles of how you know he was taking like, if you look at Boys in the Hood and you watch a western, you'll actually see some of the, you know, the camera angles and everything and the movements. You can tell that he actually got from westerns, man. Even one of the most famous scenes, if you look at Boys in the Hood, and you've seen the scene, I know we all seen Boys in the Hood. If you watch the scene <clears throat> where Ricky got shot, that's almost like that uh that that 12 o'clock, you know, hits the clock western type of uh situation, right? Everything was in slow motion, it was dramatic pa dramatic pauses all around. So the brother had a real uh strong uh aptitude when it came to filmmaking. So rest in peace to him, man. You know, big loss, big loss. Another thing I want to say is, man, you know, I think I heard Michael Jai White on the Vlad TV interview say that every day he uh, does something for the future and then he lives in the moment. Because you never know uh, what's good, brother. What's good, man? You never really know when you're going to go out here, fellas. You know, so you you want to... You know, I understand, and I talk to brothers all the time about traveling, you know, um, saving your money, you know, investing and stuff. But I always try to get brothers to, you know, travel, man. Get your passport. Take a trip. Taking the trip to Miami, that's not really traveling, man. Going to Cali. I, I, I go to Cali all the time, but, you know, that's not really getting out the matrix. You know, I be trying to get these brothers to really – you know, get on up out of here, man, because I appreciate that, man. He's talking about the last video. Appreciate that. Because, man, brothers are dealing with a lot of stress. And we're going to get to the uh, Avengers. I'm just waiting for uh, some brothers to come on in the room before we really get to the Avengers because there was a lot of symbols, a lot of metaphors, a lot of messages in that movie, even for black men. And I'm going to break that down. I'm not going to go really too deep into, you know, spoiling the, the movie for you because I know a lot of brothers haven't seen it yet. But um, real good movie. But to go back to what I was saying about brothers traveling is, uh, man, it's really important. It's, it's almost becoming mandatory for black men to have their passports. And I'm not speaking on John's Singleton situation. I'm just speaking in general. You know, one of the ca leading causes of death for black men over 34 is heart disease. 
and you get heart disease. Not you know, it's not all your diet. It's a lot of it is your diet, but it's stress as well. It's a lot of stress on the heart, man. Of of brothers, and you know, man, I'm, I'm gonna tell you like this, man. It really doesn't matter how much money you have when you're a black male in the United States. Most people would think because they have money that you know the stress level is lower or people that have money stress level is lower but sometimes the stress level is even higher because you got some people invested you know you got you know all type of you know business relationships with people that you wouldn't normally have and i'm just talking about the stresses of having money and doing business as a black man but just being a black man period can be very stressful the way they have it set up in the states is man they really don't want you to feel home you know when you get pulled over by the police officer you don't know if he's a race soldier you don't know you know what's going on with this guy you go up the street to the gas station you don't know what these young dudes is on you know these some of these cats are on drugs so i read an article today and i believe it was from it was an older article from either the new york times or the Washington Post. I'm not sure which one. But they were saying one of the leading causes of stress and heart disease for black men is actually family formation. Family formation. And they didn't get really deep into. Oh, you know what? Ooh, I've been talking here. I know you guys can't even hear me. I'm going to have to edit that part. But luckily, nobody was in the room. Okay. Let's do that over again. I've been talking for a minute now, but it's okay. We're going to get it together, fellas. Um, yeah, man, but I know you guys can hear me for a while, so we're going to edit that out, you know, um, back. But rest in peace to the brother John Singleton, man, a great legendary director. Um, had the fortunate, uh, I was very fortunate to meet him in LA at a film festival for black filmmakers, uh, maybe 2007, 2008. And it was, a, he spent about two and a half hours with us, man. Great director. He, he had a really strong uh, aptitude when it came to the craft of filmmaking. He talked, he, he talked about taking film, filmmaking very seriously. Um, he talked about black films. He even talked about the situation with Rosewood. I don't know if you brothers seen Rosewood, but John had gave the studio a different script than what he directed. And he asked John Singleton was actually blacklisted uh, for some time. If you notice that John Singleton was on a roll, right? He was on a roll until he kind of hit that Rosewood. The reason being is he he gave the studio one script. And he directed another script. In this the script that John gave it to him, John Singleton gave to him, it was a white hero. The Vean Reigns character, if you've seen Rosewood, the Vean Reigns character was white. He was a white uh, World War I veteran or, or something like that. Yeah, that's what he said. And he actually gave them, you know, a whole different concept and script, and they financed it. And he brought Bing Rames in, and then at the at the premiere of the movie, the white execs were pissed the hell off. They they didn't know anything about Bing Rames uh, getting getting the uh, you know what I'm saying getting the role. So he was actually blacklisted for a while. Luckily, Rosewood you know made his money and became a, you know classic movie. But even now, you don't see a lot of Rosewood being played, you know, because you remember. You gotta always have like a white hero in, in these black movies. And Rosewood was a story that uh, a lot of people didn't know. A lot of people still don't know that you have black Wall Streets all over the country, not just um in uh Oklahoma. You had a black Wall Streets in Atlanta, you had black Wall Streets in um North Carolina, you had black Wall Streets, like I say, throughout Florida and California. So John, man, great director, man, legendary director. Um, he broke down how we uh he, he broke down how he 
love westerns growing up you know he stayed him and his mom you know stayed across the street from a drive-in movie theater and so he get to, he got to watch a lot of movies for free he would look out his window and he would see movies on the screen because his bedroom window was um actually facing the drive-in movie theater and what he did was he showed us comparisons on you know his craft as far as how he took a lot from westerns so if you look at the movie Boys in the Hood and you look at the famous scene of, with Ricky, you know, getting shot, it was, you know, it was like a Western. The way he shot it was like a Western. Like that, you know, that 12 o'clock hits the dot, a lot of slow motion, grabbing the guns. If, if you remember the brother slowly, you know, pointed a gun out the, um, out the car, the red car, and shot Ricky. Ricky was running in slow motion and the pause tray was like, Ricky! He got all of that from watching like Clint Eastwood movies and everything. So that brother man was extremely talented, man. Uh, we're gonna miss him very dearly. I'm gonna catch up on all the Snowfall episodes. But I say that to say, you know, brothers, we have been kind of put in a bond here in this country, and it really doesn't matter how much money you have when it becomes to stress levels. You know, and that's why I be trying to get brothers to get their passports and travel. You know, I know John had, you know, money and everything, and I'm pretty sure he was well traveled, but it really doesn't matter how much money you have. I mean, you can see, you know, the Bill Cosby situation or Kelly situation. So, you know, traveling kind of gives you more of a balance. You know what I'm saying? As a black man, when you travel and, you know, when you travel, the good thing about being in these different countries, especially countries like Brazil, and um, Colombia and the DR, you feel more normal. You don't feel like a target is really on your back, you know? So, you know, I was telling the guy last year about Brazil, and I put him on the phone with A. Harper, Alan Harper of, of, of the Black Man Options and Black Jet Setters, and he was all down about going to Brazil and everything. And the brother was a little overweight. But he wasn't like no really real big sloppy dude, but he was, you know, he was older. He was a little overweight. And he was saying he was going to go. He was going to go. He had the money and everything. He's going to buy a ticket. He was looking up the tickets with, with me, talking to Alan Harper. And the brother did not go. A few months later, this brother suffered a, a mild stroke. And he actually called me to pick him up from the hospital. Because the brother wasn't married. He didn't have a lot of family down here. And, um, you know, I actually had to pick the brother from the hospital, man. And, he, you know, he was okay. He had been in there for a couple of weeks. Um, he had a you know, disability and everything. And he was like, man, when I was in the hospital, you know, in the, you know, on my bed, man, I was thinking about what you told me about Brazil. Because the brother had no kids. He wouldn't have no wife. He was like, man. The first thing I thought about when I thought I might could possibly die was how I really haven't done enough for myself. You know what I'm saying? How I haven't, you know, I got a little money in the bank, but I, I never traveled. You know, I don't have any real deal life experiences. I never dated overseas. And I was like, you know, as I'm driving, I'm like, man, you know, it's not, you know, it's cool, man. I'm just happy you, you know, you're okay. But he was like, nah, Ferris, I'm going to make it a point, you know, to start traveling, man, because. You know, you're right. You know, it's a lot of stresses going on, man. Because I'm going to tell you, dog, the way they have it set up here, man, is you don't know who you're getting pulled over by. You don't know if it's a racist cop. You know, you go up the street, these kids on all these drugs now. So you got the crackheads from the age still sitting around. But you got the new junkies now that's on these pills. That's nothing but legal heroin. And, you know, it can be a little stressful, man. You dating, you you, you living right, you know, you, you moving right, and even you know the dating can be a little stressful at times, all the lies and everything. So, you know, save your money, man. Go overseas, travel. You know what I'm saying? Get that passport, fellas. Trust me, you're gonna thank me later. Get that passport. Go to Bel go to Brazil. You know, go to Belize. Go to you know um, Trinidad, Dominica. You know, Haiti. Colombia, Brazil, Thailand, just save your money, man. You know, it's it's not as expensive. It's expensive, but if you manage your money correctly throughout the year, you know, every man deserves to get the hell on at least once a year. 
You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. Um, definitely, man. Uh, rest in peace to the great legendary director, John Singleton. So let me see here. Let me see if I can. I'm going to shoot out. This is an open hangout, man. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open the chat up here. If anybody wants to come on who's seen the movie, you know, I don't want to. I know a lot of guys haven't seen the movie, so I'm not really going to, you know, spoil it too bad for you. But it was a lot of messages in that movie, man. Great movie, by the way. But it was a gender feel. The movie was a gender feel to the core. And you have to expect that almost um, from these Hollywood blockbusters now. You know, they're going to fit it in. They're going to fit the feminist agenda in. You know, I was surprised I didn't see, you know, no LGBTism up in here. It, it was a little bit slight. I think Miss Marvel or Miss Miss America, whoever the hell she was, I don't even, I'm not even familiar with her that she came in at. You know, I didn't like her character at all. I was ready. I don't think nobody from what I saw, I saw the movie with a packed movie theater. But, you know, it had a little feminist little thing, you know, it, it was, you know, it's a little, you know, Thor, you know, he was good, but it, it has funny little parts. Oh, all in all, man, it was a great movie, though. It was a great movie, but the Thanos represented, Thanos was Thanos. Um, Thanos really said some real, it was a lot of racial metaphors that I don't know if everybody's going to catch, but Every word spoken by a character pretty much means something. They slide a lot of stuff in the dialogue, as well as the symbols, you know, in the movie. So believe it, you know, you can watch that movie once. And most Hollywood blockbuster movies, if you don't know what you're looking for, you're going to miss it. Because everybody looking at it through entertainment, the eyes of entertainment. And the crowd in the, in the movie theater was going, man. They was gone. So, man, great movie. Great movie, bros. Go check it out. Uh, Thanos, man. Thanos is a good character for men to kind of model their life after. Not in a sense of you know killing people, but just his laser focus, you know, his his agenda, you know, fulfilling your agenda as a man, no matter what it is. You know, hopefully it's a positive agenda, but no matter what it is. Keep moving forward. Don't let nobody stop you. You know, now, this is somewhat of a spoiler, but my theory was right. You know, I knew what they was going to do. I knew, I kind of knew they was going to, you know, do the whole time thing. I hope I didn't give away too much, fellas. You know, if, if you haven't seen the movie, go ahead and click off the video. You know, uh, you can watch it after you see the movie. But I kind of knew that they was going to do the time thing. I knew they were going to do the time thing. Um, just being a writer myself, I knew it was no way they could just end all those franchises like that. Because that's their bread and butter. You know, Thor and well, Thor would have been working. But uh, some of the other characters that, you know, lost their lives in the, in the uh, other Avengers movie, you know, that's billions of dollars. So I knew that it was going to kind of make a little time, you know, Back to the future <laughs> kind of thing with that. So yeah, you know, hopefully, you know, I didn't spoil too much for you right there. But I'm gonna tell you what Thanos said. Thanos said the most interesting, interesting, interesting thing. He basically said what European colonizers have done to black people. And if you missed that part, I don't know how you would miss that part. But I really didn't hear any reaction in the, the movie theater. Thanos was basically like, um, because you've done this, because you tried to destroy my destiny, I'm going to completely wipe out your history and start a whole new, uh, start humanity over again, and they will never know who you are and what they came from. If that's not the case for black people, I don't know what it is, man. You know, because we had such a long, deep history. And in order for them to make, uh, you know, 
a slave that wouldn't rebel, they had to erase a lot. You know, we don't know of our great heroes from, you know, Africa and everything. We don't know a lot of history. A lot of people don't even know about the Gullah Geechee Wars and uh, Northern Florida and Georgia and South Carolina and Osceola, how they fought against slavery, how they're finding uh, old documents from slaves about how they got, you know, uh, captured in, the, in West Africa and everything. And in, in these documents, they're saying that it was a great military battle. We didn't know anything about them battle. We didn't know the Africa, you know, really fought like that to stop slavery. But in some cases, they really did. I mean, the Shanti people, they really was not tolerating slavery. And some of us got to, you know, being prisoners of war, really. In that document, I believe he said that he was 38 when he was taken, he was taken into slavery. He was 38. So real, man, you know, a lot of, you know, symbols, like I say, and metaphors in this movie, man. Real good movie. Um, what else did Thanos say? Thanos said a lot of stuff, man. But that was that, that really stuck out. Another thing that really stuck out, which kind of even went over my head. I don't know what they're trying to say. But Captain America gave his shield, the American star, to, damn, I forgot the brother's name, but it's played by Anthony Mackie. And the, it, was the very, it was the last scene. It was the la very last scene where he gave the star to the brother. Like he gave America to the brother. You know what I'm saying? He was old. He was tired. He was withered. Hey, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dries, just hit the link in the, in the chat right there, bro. You, you'll jump right on. You hit that link right there. Yeah, man, that was that was big, though. I don't know if a lot of brothers caught that. But a lot of brothers don't realize that there were Muslims and Moors in the formation of America. A lot of people don't know that. I, I believe it was George Washington that had like Muslims all in the White House and everything. You know, it was it was a lot going on with the formation in this country, brothers. We we've been here for a very long time. We was on we was on the boats. You know, some of us were slaves, but some of us wasn't. You know, you had Moors navigating some of these these slave ships. You know, it wasn't slavery at some point wasn't for a while actually was not racially based. They were taking slaves from 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 Africa, and you had Moors on those ships. You had blacks in the military in Africa capturing slaves. So at, at some point, it wasn't racially based. So for Captain America to give the American symbol, the star, to the brother Anthony Mackey, and I keep forgetting the, the guy's uh, character, you know, that was big. And, I, and, I, and, and in my head, I'm just like, what are they trying to say? Are they trying to say that they're passing the torch to black Americans? I mean, you're dealing with a negative birth rate. Dealing with a negative birth rate. They're dealing with, I'm sorry, they're dealing with a negative birth rate, actually. You know, I'm going to tell you exactly what that means, brothers. I'm going to tell you exactly what that means. And I'm going to go a little deep here. Everybody that's watching. Yeah, Falcon. Yeah, that's right. Falcon. Appreciate that, Drees. You know, in, in, in the world, believe it or not, you know, yeah, you got other races of people. You do have other races of people. But I want you to realize that the world at some point have been controlled and ruled by black men. I know, I know you know you don't, you know, you might not believe me, but the entire globe from Europe to Australia, all, all over the Americas, 
the world was ruled by melanated men. Right? And the pendulum tends to swing from black to white, or what you consider the Caucasian to the African. However you how you however you want to say it, basically. Now get into Hebrew Israelites and all that. What I'm trying to say is don't think because right now we're in this position that we're gonna stay in this position as a group of men. Don't think we're gonna stay in this position forever because they weren't in the position that they are just 500 years ago. And sometimes people can see when that pendulum is starting to swing a little bit. It's starting to swing a little bit back to the people of the sun. Oh, I know I went a little deep there, fellas. I lost a few of you when I said that, but when Captain America passed him that shield, that was very symbolic because they had all types of characters. They had about, they had so many characters, so many um, superheroes, right? For him to pass that shield to the Falcon out of all those superheroes, and there was a white guy behind him looking at Captain America, you know what I'm saying, at first. But then Anthony Mackie, the brother, the Falcon, looks back at the, at the white guy. And the white guy's like, mm -hmm. like, go ahead. It's cool. Go ahead. And if you don't know how symbolic that is, right, that's very symbolic. Because the brother still looked back at the at the, the white guy like, you know, this is you sure about this, y'all? Y'all y'all sure about this? You know? And Captain America was tired. He was old. He wanted peace. The white man wanted peace. That was, and that was the, I believe that was the last scene. If it wasn't the last scene, it was the very next to last scene. But I believe that was the last scene in the movie. Man, that's very powerful. That's very powerful. It's very telling. It's very powerful. Now to get to the BS. And it's funny, man, because when you're watching a movie in a packed theater, you really get to see the reaction of, you know, just all types of people, right? Because the, the, the theater had white, Latino, Indian, you know, mostly, you know, blacks. But you get to see, you know, women, kids, children. And it's this scene. It's the scene in the movie where um, <laughs> they're fighting Thanos and all of the female superheroes kind of like came together. And it was like this girl power moment, this you know feminist girl power moment. And the funny thing about it, I was sitting by a sister, and the sister was just like, oh, "Here we go." You know what I'm saying? She was like, "Where the Hulk at?" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Even the women in the movie theater wasn't really just. They were just like, you know, it wasn't a whole bunch of. I was surprised it wasn't a whole bunch of clapping in that scene. You know, it wasn't a whole lot, a bunch of clapping in that scene, man. It was more or less. You know, okay, next. Because people wanted to see everybody else battling for the most part. Like, that scene wasn't really needed. It was so blatant. You know, they had a girl moment. But, you know, and it was cool. It didn't, it didn't you know, it didn't touch me any type of wrong way or nothing. I thought it was like, oh, everybody was just kind of like, you know, okay, where's Black Panther? Where's Spider-Man at? Even the women. You know, there was really no bunch of clapping because it, it, we had a lot of people that was applauding and screaming. It was a packed movie theater. It was what, a Sunday night. So, you know, even my, my the girl that was with me, she wasn't even really tripping on that. She was just like, man, please, where the Hulk at? Everybody was pretty much saying where the Hulk at because everybody wanted to see the Hulk and Thanos fight. So, you know, that's the one little criticism I might have on it. Everybody wanted to see that fight. When the whole female was Superhero, the Miss Marvel or something was fighting Thanos. Everybody was just like, you know, it really wasn't no applause, nothing. So it was good though. It was a good fight. 
but she got washed like everybody else. You know, Thanos is a beast, bro. That was my dude. Thanos was my dude. I was going for Thanos. I ain't gonna lie. I was going for Thanos the whole movie. So yeah, man, but a lot of good, you know, a lot of good metaphors, man. Um, I'm trying to think about some other things, but they were saying a lot of stuff in there, man. They were saying a lot of stuff in there. Wait for my brother Drees to get here. Let me check out the chat. Yeah, we ain't here tonight, man. You're in here. So yeah, man. Really good movie. Um, it, it was it started off a little slow, you know what I'm saying? It had to build up, but the first, you know, the first 10, 15 minutes is still legendary because some stuff went down. So try to get to the movie theater early. I believe the movie grossed like a billion dollars in the opening weekend. So, you know, it was good enough that, to warrant that, man, because I, you, you almost want to see it twice because the way they did it this time is they really did sneak in a lot of little, you know, um, Easter eggs and innuendos and metaphors. And if you've been watching the franchise for a while, you will see little things being mentioned here and there. Oh, okay. My bad. I got you, my nigga, my dude. Hold on, I got you. Give me a second. Jeez, I don't have your WhatsApp no more, man. You know, I had changed my number. Let me see. Oh, here we go. All right, try that one right out, uh, right there, Drees. Try that one out. That should be it. The email. Let me see here. Let me get Drees on here. Give me one second, family. Let me try to get get my man's on here real quick. Oh. Give me one. Oh, there you go. What up? What up, brother? What's happening? Man, what's up with you? Chilla, chilla, chilla. That's what's up, man. How's everybody out there in uh, YouTube playing tonight? How y'all doing? Yeah, man, we in there. What you think about that movie, though, bro? Oh, man, it's all, it's gangster. It was gangster how they had it. It'll, I'm hearing myself. That might be, hold on, let me see something real quick. Well, it was definitely well put. It was definitely on, well put together. Hold on, let me let me get something straight real quick. All right. Yeah, it was a game. You still hear yourself? That might be my. Hold on, let me see. I'm on mute. Hold on. All right. I'm. I'm. I'm all right. I just. I, it, it, I heard myself and then it cut up. You good now? It's saying you're on mute right now. You hear yourself now? Yeah, I'm hearing myself still. I'm hearing feedback from somewhere. Oh, wait a minute. Let me try something out. Let me try something out. Okay. Hello? Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, you should hear the feedback. Yeah. Man, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that, bro. Yeah. Man, lucky be hitting the gym, bro. Be in the gym. No, no, no. Just that. It just right now. I've been just eating, man. Oh, you know, okay. I get on my sit ups and my push ups every now and again. Dude, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Oh yeah, I, I, I... Hold on. 
Hold on. Still got feedback. Yeah, let me see. Hold on. Let me try to work something out real quick. I'll be doing my penitentiary shit. Still got feedback. You still got feedback? Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Tripping. How about now? Yeah, it's good. You've been good on my end. Uh, yeah, it was me. I forgot I had the uh, actual thing still running on the other YouTube. I forgot YouTube and Hangout separates. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So where were we, man? Man, I, I, was, I was just talking about um, all the little the little elements of, of, of the of the movie, man, like all the little metaphors and the, the symbols. What you think? What you think about it? Did you catch anything that, you know, that stuck out to you? Well, the thing that stuck out to me the most is that all the black people got the lead shit all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. uh, Anthony Mackey, uh, my neighbor, he's, he, he's going to be Captain America, which he was in Captain America if you read the comic books. Mm -hmm. Just That's why he looked back at uh, at uh, White Wolf. Not White. Yeah, White Wolf. Well, he was White Wolf in, in the whole MCU, but uh, your boy with the arm, uh -huh. he, he was Captain America for a little while, too. So okay. that's why he looked back, you know, they, you know, they had that little symbolism right there. And then Thor gave authority of Asgard to uh, Tessa Thompson. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so I was real cool with that. But, you know, it was somehow they did the whole little all women get together. They did that shit for like, <laughs> they did that shit for like five seconds. Yeah, you know man. Yeah, yeah, they didn't want to, they didn't want to touch that, which mm -hmm. I was cool with because they kind of wore that bullshit out, not with the Captain Marvel movie, but with the girl that played Captain Marvel and yeah. her interviews and shit. She kept on trying to push that issue. And I really don't know what she was talking about. If I was her, I'd have just did my movie and just, what the fuck on? Yeah. You know, she'd have, it'd have been more people would have went and sell the movie if she'd have just be, been quiet, you know? Yeah, man, that, that, it, it, you know what? And it was too planned almost. It was, it, you know, it, it just was so planned and to credit the women that was in the movie theater because you know everybody like it wasn't like a, a big applause when that happened when i was nope. in the movie theater with me was there applause with you nope that's what i'm saying like even the women were just like okay like my girl was just like you know where where, where the hulk at you know what I'm saying? She yeah. like where the hulk at like she, she because it was too women don't like to see things that's just too planned out that's just too constructed you know what i'm saying right if it wasn't so constructed, like when, when when everybody was just whipping ass the women were like yeah 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 you know but when he just the whole pan and all the women just got together yeah it was no big applause people were just like what the hope yeah. what that was at you know what i'm saying like you can't yeah. do it like that but they had a little girl power moment and it was just too blatant yeah it only lasts for a few seconds yeah, exactly. So, you know, I'm next. Thankful. Yeah, I'm thankful for that. You know what yeah. I mean? So, so you got it too when Captain America gave his shield to Falcon. I yeah. was just shocked, bro. I was shocked. I, I knew it was going to happen uh -huh. when he, when they, when they put him in the machine and they hit the button, he didn't come back. I said, that's going to be an old man, Steve Rogers, sitting on the thing over there. Uh -huh. That's what happened. You know what I'm saying? Because it was a, a certain little, uh, incident in the comic book where it was like they had like a a, a thing where you're supposed to make a wish and and steve rogers with all the shit he had been through he just wanted to just live you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so that's so that was a call back all the way back a couple movies back when um him and uh iron man got into it and iron man said man get a life you know so when he went back with the stones he went back and had that life you know yep. what i'm saying yeah man you know, um, did you think the movie, like, did you have any uh, thoughts about, like, the pacing of the movie a little bit? Did you, did you think it was too slow at the beginning or you was kind of rolling with it the whole time? No, nah, I was cool with the whole thing. I mean, everything that they needed to put together, it's mm -hmm. 22 movies. So how right, are you right. going to take 22 movies and then compose it in an hour and a half? That ain't going to happen. Yeah. It had, it had to be three hours. Before yeah. that movie is concerned, I don't care what nobody out there in YouTube land say, y'all are still chasing 
Batman Dark Knight Rises with uh with uh with Heat Legend in it. Yeah. They're still chasing that movie. I don't give a shit what they put out. Ain't nothing gonna catch that movie, you know what I'm saying? Thank you, bro. Hey, I was telling my date that I was just sitting here like she asked me what was my favorite uh movie, and I was like the Dark Knight Rises with the Joker. She's like, yeah. ah, you too. I'm like, yeah, man, that shit is a classic. Like, that's the Everybody. probably the best movie I've ever seen, damn near. That's why Russo Brothers went so hard. Mm -hmm. You know, er, I mean, there's still elements of that movie that you know they just caught it at the they just caught it with the right people to write everything, you know. And it makes me want to see how that joke is gonna be with uh Joaquin Phoenix in it. Man, yeah. Because, because he he part nuts on the regular. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm gonna love to see him in here. And then he got uh I think Martin Scorsese directing it, I think. I didn't know and, that. I believe really? that's more. Yeah, I think it was. I think they had touted that Mark Scorsese was going to do it, but I'm not sure. You had to look it up. Uh -huh. But from the but from the looks of it, when you watch the commercial or on Joker, when you see it on YouTube, I'm looking at this at the thing, and they have to hurry up and put the DC stamp there because you forget that it's a DC entity. You know, you forget that it's a a, a DC movie. You just know, damn Joker, and it's like without the Batman. And if they go, if they could pull that off. You know, and uh, you better watch DC because if you take the Russo brothers and give them all the DC characters with all the, you know, give them the DC with all the characters under the same umbrella, do you understand the type of movies that you can make? Mm -hmm. And just about each character Wonder Woman, Superman, Batman, all of them got 50, 60 years of enemies, 50, 60 years of stories, 50, 60 years of, uh, man, look. If you let the Russo brothers get the like 1950 Superman, oh, they made movies for, for decades, mm. you know. Yeah, man. But that, uh that's the one franchise I'm surprised that didn't make it. it was a Superman franchise. Well, look, to me, the DCEU should have started, they should have started kick that off with uh with your boy that did Dark Knight Rises. They mm. should have let him be over that. Zack Snyder don't give a shit about no comic books, man. Yep. You know? He don't. Yeah, some guy named Todd Phillips is direct, directing the movie. It's the guy who did Hangover and War Dogs. And Road yeah. Trip. So he's, he's a pretty good director, but he's been doing yeah. comedies. So Yeah, he's he pretty accomplished, though. Yeah. But uh, at first, it was supposed to have been Martin Scorsese. Mm -hmm. But either way, the, the, the commercial, how they got it set up, it, it, it looks it looks gorgeous but you know it, it ain't like they got him falling into the acid and cutting his face up and all that there right they just got right. him drawing they just got him drawing shit on his face and 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 that's the joker yeah, you know what i'm saying but man, anyway, i think it, it's gonna be nice it's funny man because i didn't think that they were gonna be able to top the first jack nicholson joker because that was a classic right there you know but well, he topped it and went above and beyond it really yeah he was a, uh, I mean, but personally, uh, the Jack Nicholson Joker, Heath Ledger Joker, it was like the perfect timing for that age in which they came out in. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how they're going to do this joke here. They got to go back to like, I, I don't know how they're going to do it. I just, it just looked good. And I just hope everything turns out well, because more than anything, I'm a DC fan. I read more DC than I did Marvel. Okay. You know? So. I, I I just been waiting for that to turn out right, you know. And I wish, as far as DC is concerned, I wish they would they still would have let Zack Snyder do his whole imagery of the Justice League, because if you read the whole three story arc, oh the shit was wild, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But they had a whole different uh, Superman that was supposed to come out around 2005, and the story on that shit was amazing, mm -hmm. you know. But Everything kept on falling through, falling through. They had a whole nother Justice League that was supposed to kick off in 2006. That fell through. And, and hey. All know, right. Uh, 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 I think that's how you pronounce his name, says DC is behind the curve because you have to remember that DC puts all its energy into them TV shows. Well, the, t d hey, the TV show, the, the one that's... Uh, uh, real not real time. I just say that uh, real life action like the Flash and Arrow. Mm -hmm. They actually they actually killing it. That and the cartoons they have on TV. And then on top of that, 
the animated movies, I'm not gonna lie, this shit is off the chain. Right. Like the, the one with the flash, that's that's like my favorite one. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, you he know, said. He says, in order for DC to equal Marvel, they have to make all their movies adult themed. But I know Dark Knight was adult themed, though. Right. But here's my thing about DC quit trying to catch up to Marvel. Just right. make good damn movies. That's mm-hmm. it. You ain't got to catch up to them. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? You, you do not have to catch up to them. You know, let go get, go get the act, go get. The boy that did Aquaman, the girl that did Wonder Woman, and let them do them. Let them read the comic books or however they did the first one and go on and do their own little thing. Right, right. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Right, right. Yeah, man. But, uh, now, did you have any any uh, clue about them bringing everybody back? Spoiler alert, fellas, if you watch the spoiler alert. Actually, I mean, uh, with the whole thing when they when they made the owner, their own Infinity Gauntlet, that was actually a thing in the comics, you know. But like I said, I wasn't really up on Avengers like that, you know. Yeah, I read more X Men, you know. Me too. But uh, I didn't really have a clue on it. But you know, it got to the point where I quit thinking about it because every two days you look on YouTube. Oh, this is what's gonna happen. They're gonna go into the quantum realm. I'm like, mm-hmm. man, shut the fuck, shut up and watch the movie, please. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And, and, and I just had to just turn my mind off from that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, man, I, I kind of knew that they was going to do the whole Back to the Future thing. You know, it, it was, I just knew, yeah. they were, you know, they went about the end, you know, Black Panther and, and everybody, you know what I'm saying? Like it's billions right. of dollars at stake. So I, I knew they was going to bring it back. You know, I, I was, I said, there's no way they're going to have all them characters just die off like that. So I, I kind of right. knew, as soon as I seen Ant-Man with the whole Quantum Leap, Future, yeah. shit, I like. I said okay. I told my girl. I said, yeah, I was right. It's, you know, she was like, "You think you always right?" I'm like, "No, nah, I know because I'm a writer. I, I know that you kind of, you know, what I'm saying right. You well, have people come back. They had to write off Scarlett Johansson, Chris Evans, and and, and uh, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, they get paid too much because yeah. people started to notice. Okay, Scarlett Johansson and, and Iron Man, they getting twenty million, and none of them had single movies that broke the billion mark. Mm-hmm. Black Panther had a broke the billion mark, but Chadwick Boseman only got like three million. Mm. So it, in a business move, yeah, go ahead on and let Chris Evans and, and Robert Downey and Scarlett go on about their business and just let let uh what's his name do his thing, you know? But you still got Mark Ruffalo there, you know? And it made sense to get rid of Greta Pathro too. I think she's gone after this movie. You know what I mean? Now, but, I, was, uh, I was confused. Did she have an Iron Man suit on at the end? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, she she was she had an Iron Man suit on in Iron Man Three. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And, and then on top of that, she got that Artemis shit in her, mm-hmm. where she get to burn stuff up and, and you know it can regenerate and all that kind of stuff. You mm. know, from Iron Man Three. Okay. Yeah, so, so she on some you superhuman shit now, but. You know, she gonna go ahead on and go to where the dinosaur with with Robert Downey. Mm. You know, because I think she would, you know, tired of that fool, start tired of uh, comic book movies too. But, right, right. You know, I, I, my thing is, I just wonder where they gonna go next. You know, mm-hmm. you know, because the believe it or not, with Captain America not coming back in the manner which he was supposed to, mm. that's what's gonna lead to Phase Four with all the other stuff they got to bring in. See, he was just supposed to go back and place the uh, stones back and come back. But he went and placed the stones back where they came from and then went back to his time to have his life with uh, A.J. Carter. That's going to be how they open up to the next phase with all these other people supposed to come in, the Galactuses and the Wolverines. and That's how that's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? That's how the mutants going to get here, pretty much. Okay. Okay. You know? That's that's how that, that's exactly how that's gonna happen. So, you know, spoiler alert for mm-hmm. your next phase of Marvel movies, Captain America is the reason why you're gonna have Wolverine and and whoever else they decide to bring new from the whole Fox side of Marvel. Got you, got you, got you. Now, were you into like the whole Guardians of the Galaxy part of it too? 
Like, did you grow up, you know, uh, you know, reading the comic books and everything? Because I wasn't familiar with Guardians of the Galaxy at all, like with I, and all that. I was familiar with it, but you know, that was, you know, I was liking the Earth based or Earth based characters, you know, okay. on Marvel side, the Wolverines, you know, the Hulks, you know, it was spaceship with. The only thing I dealt with as far as space was Silver Surfer. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I rock with. I, that too. I, I, I rock with Silver Surfer. I used to watch the cartoon and everything. Mm -hmm. And that's the dude who used to uh, scrap with Thanos on the regular. You know what I'm saying? But I thought they were going to do the whole thing where Drax kills Thanos. Because in the comics, Drax kills Thanos. Mm -hmm. You know? Stabbed him in the back with the knife. Pull his whole heart out through the front and shit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It, it, yeah, but I never really got into the Guardians of the Galaxy because it was weird. You know, when it came to space, you know, that was for me, uh, Superman, Green Lantern, you know, all the DC uh, characters, uh -huh. you know. But the only person I did with on Marvel in space was Silver Surfer. Got you. you. Know? Got you. Yeah. You know, but like, from, a, from a comic book standpoint, DC always was on point. And when Marvel had good comics, it was motherfuckers coming from the DC side, going to Marvel, making that money. And then they bring the ass right back to DC. Or, or vice versa, you know. Now, now I wanna I wanna get something straight because I was a little confused by this. Now I know the the magician has you know foreseen this, but when Spider Man was talking to Iron Man, right, he said they was in a different dimension for five minutes or something. Yeah, and came right back out. Yeah, it was like five years had passed on Earth, but in the realm where it was, time worked differently. So five years over here was five minutes in there like how or uh, five hours or something like that uh -huh. but dude had was the owner of the time stone so using the time stone he went into the future on infinity war to see how to beat thanos you okay. know you know but and the one way he found was the only way he could do anything and that's why he never told tony what was going to happen next because he knew tony had to die and and that's what that was what was one of my theories right there. Like the whole, you know, uh when he when he told him, like, you know, I can't tell you what's gonna happen, I knew Tony was gonna die at that point. Right. You know. Right. So that was cold, right. man. I, you know, everybody felt it with Iron Man, you know, you know, he was like one of the favorite characters. But like you said, you know, the guy was getting paid so much money, and I'm sure Robert Downey Jr. was kind of tired. I mean, three movies, then your own franchise, you know, that's that's a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, no, that was actually he did. He was in what three of his own and yeah. then five Avengers movies. There you, you go. Know? So yeah. So and then on top of that, the Spider Man. So he was in like nine of the twenty two movies. Oh you wow! Know what I'm saying. Oh wow! So yeah, that that you looking at that's probably one hundred eighty million right there. <laughs> oh, you man. know what I'm saying? Yeah. As compared to, you know, your boy uh, Black Panther been in three of the. The, the the biggest grossing movies and he probably got barely 20. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's but, the thing, man. You know, you know, we need our own we need our own uh superhero franchise. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know. But my thing is I just want to see what's gonna happen with Thor. Me you too. Know, I was saying that earlier. Cause I, I read some of the other Thor shit and they got a dude that went through uh, in the comics, uh -huh. killing Thor daddy, granddaddy, dude named God Butcher. You know, anybody that knew about God Butcher looked that up. And Thor had to go back in time and get the uh, Thor in the past, and then he had to go in the future and get Rune King Thor. Uh -huh. And Rune King Thor is is like the Thor that they have in the MCU, like times nine. So, you know, you, you got to check that, check that shit out. You know, so I, I just want to see if they have a throw for next, because uh, for as and as far as the Avengers as a whole, I just want to see where they go next. If they gonna go Galactus, or, or are they gonna go Annalis? You know, uh, are they gonna go with Braxus? Mm -hmm. You know, Galactus. You know, and and a Braxus is a motherfucker, but you know, a lot of these people that's watching these movies probably watching this uh feed don't know who the hell I just named. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just leave that alone and just wait for the people in Hollywood to make the movie they think that they plan on making. You know, 
it's all good dc marvel you make the movie you got my 999 i'm gonna see your sad at the man name just make the <laughs> you know just make the movie you right. know what i'm saying right yeah man so um man i was shocked you know when i really you know it was like oh shit, my old shit moment by the movie was when uh thor just yam yeah, uh thanos in the in like the, the beginning scenes was yeah. the in the movie I was like, is that a is that a fake Thanos like it was in the you know in the other movie? But you know, it was cool, man. I was like, damn. Well, the thing about it, he died, right? And I was like, okay, I don't know what since that meant because you stupid motherfuckers got to go get the time stones and y'all go back, which means y'all bring the man back to life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it wasn't like it was a big uh, oh shit moment for me because I knew Thanos was gonna be back, but right, you know. It was just my old shit movie. My old shit part of the movie was when they went to go find Thor in New Asgard and Thor around that bitch looking like, uh, <laughs> the bit looked like yeah, he around it looking crazy among all bummed out. Yeah, I'm like man, man, how you the god of war and you around here built like this here, man? You, man, you, he can I, he, he's so big, he can't even fly with the hammer no more. Yeah, man, that shit was funny as hell. I, I think it was. A lot of elements was dealing with time. The whole, I think, the whole movie, you know, if you can sum it up, is about you know time. So, right. How old is Thor? Like what, thousand years old or something like that? Yeah, like sixteen hundred. Sixteen hundred years old. Yeah. You know, Captain America. How old was he? Captain America was probably like right Maybe. about now. Captain America would be hitting on about ninety right about now. You see what I'm saying? So everything yeah. was kind of situated about time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. that's why the, the the movie to me was 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 it was a very well written movie because everything was referenced, you know, to time basically. Right. And they, and, they, and you know you needed three hours for that. Right. You know what I'm saying? I I tripped out when uh Hulk went walked up on the old lady. I was like, oh shit, boy, don't do that. Don't yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah. Just lay there, put them hands on him. You know? Yeah, man. That's the only part I've been disappointed in the last two movies, man. Is is I feel like Hulk just been jilted. I'm like, yo, what's up with the Thanos fight, man? What's up with the rematch? Well, the whole thing about the uh let me tell you why the whole Hulk didn't come out in uh, Infinity War. Mm -hmm. You know the lady, all right, uh Corvus Glaive and uh 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 Thanos had the four uh the four, I guess, four horsemen uh, that Hulk was fighting in the last one, you know, where he put the thing on his hand and made him fly up into the shield. Mm -hmm. Them four right there with the lady with the horns that, uh, uh, damn, what is that woman's name? She killed him. I mean, she killed her. Uh, what is your girl with the hands that would that be with vision? The one that go that was going with vision. Um, I forgot her name, man. I know Scarlet, the one Scarlet Witch killed. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, though. All right, Scarlet, the one that Scarlet Witch killed, uh, if you didn't know, the one that Scarlet Witch killed in Infinity War, uh -huh. and the one that uh, Vision killed in Infinity War, the one that looks, the one that looked like Skip Bayless. Uh -huh. If you know who that is, yeah. Uh, in the comics, those two are married. Okay. So that's why they kind of went out the same same man in the same right in the same move uh moment mm -hmm. but in the comics uh proxima midnight that's her name the, the lady with the horns that uh scarlett johansson kept on fighting and handling and by the way i'm tired of that bitch trying to fight everybody and beat everybody right it right bit, you know but proxima midnight has a had a staff that when hulk came running at her in the comics the staff did something to the Hulk to make him change back to David Banner. Mm. So that's how they bypassed that whole thing in the last movie. Got you. You know, and they just morphed it into, okay, he got his ass whooped. So Hulk and uh, David Banner, they've been fussing back and forth, fussing back and forth. So I got the whole thing just based on knowing some of the comics, you know, but uh, the whole reason why the whole movie that went the way it went is because everybody was expecting it to go the way the comics were supposed to go. Cause see, the dude from uh that's in the cocoon from um Guards in the Galaxy 2 uh -huh. supposed to had came and took the uh Infinity Gauntlet from um 
Thanos. But if you look at how they did it in the comics, if you go do that in the movies, oh, there's gonna be some people mad with you because the dude just walked up on Thanos and said, Oh, let me take this glove from him. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's how it ended. It just ended with him holding the glove and Thanos had them going on about his business. But in the comics, uh your girl with the uh bald head, uh Gamora's sister, she took the glove. And then um, but because like Thanos had, you know, when uh, Thanos had your girl spread out in the air uh -huh. and it was like doing a thing with the stone and, and pulling her apart and shit. Oh, in the comic books, man, he fucked over that little girl. Uh -huh. He turned that girl into like a, 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 a decaying corpse, you know, like skin and shit falling off, you know, I, you know, eyelids fell off so she couldn't close her eyes. Her eyes were, oh man. If you looked into the comics and seen how, how Thanos did, uh, what is that woman's name? Um, Gamora's sister. What is Gamora's sister's name? Oh, man, somebody, somebody in the comment section, help me help. Yeah. Um, I mean, but he just did that girl all types of wrong through that whole infinity uh quest. Yeah. Somebody in the comment section, help. Me. Um, let's see. Nebula. Nebula, that's it. Yeah. And eventually Nebula ended up getting the infinity gauntlet. And everybody was like, oh no, she can't have it. That's worse than Thanos having it. So they had to find out a way to get it from her. And then Thanos got it back. And then Adam Warlock walked up and was like, look, give me that. And the shit just was over. So if they had went that way with it, oh uh, she would have, you know, people would have been, it'd have been a fallout at the uh movie theater. Somebody would have got shot. You yeah. know. But uh how they did it to bypass all the other things that they could not necessarily do because in the actual infinity saga you had to have adam warlock which was still in the cocoon you had to have uh eros which they never brought up eros was thanos's brother uh, -huh. uh you had to have uh in silver surfer and that's a whole fox thing you know so i'm guessing with the whole thing with Captain America not coming back. That was the reason why you're gonna have all these other beings show up probably in the next couple of movies. Now okay. knowing the whole how Russo and them work, you know, they probably gonna tell you, oh, it's gonna be a couple of years before this that and happen. They probably got two, three movies made up already. Uh -huh. You know, so I'm not trying to get into the whole what's gonna happen next, what they plan on doing. I'm just gonna wait for them to make the next damn movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. That's what's up, man. Right. So uh I think that's it, man. I think we're gonna wrap it on up, brother. You, you doing another live stream tonight? Yeah, I'm going live with a brother in actually about 20 minutes, talking about some things going on in Colombia. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Hey, anything I see you have posted a, a video, man, about the, the young lady in the Sasua. Uh, but she ended up being okay, right? uh somebody told me that she was alive and well but i'm not necessarily showing that mm -hmm. you know but from the looks of it it went from her talking to folk all uh and then it turned into everybody sitting up there taking selfies with the broad laying in the street not moving i was like what kind of shit is this you know and that's what made me start realizing things about social media the whole purpose behind social media is to really make black people anti-social right i'll explain how many times you don't woke up in the morning you don't text somebody y'all done set up there and text all morning you get up to go get some breakfast that person gets up to go get some breakfast y'all at the same grocery store you see the motherfucker in aisle three you look take your ass down aisle five get your grits and egg and then go back to the uh caterers to get your shit and go home and the first thing you do when you get home hey man you was at the store it's trying to stop us from being social people bro Right. And when we stop being social, we get into this whole shit where we at now. Right. So the whole purpose of social media for black folks is anti-socialism, if you will. Gotcha. You gotcha. know, and I had thought about uh, talking about that, but I, I, I don't want to tear away from travel because I, I kind of got away from travel last night and, and I ended up having to uh, get rid of the screen that I did last night. I was doing four hours on some other shit and mm -hmm. fucked around and had done posted something else shit on the screen share. And I was like, oh, I, I got to get rid of that. So yeah. I'm going to keep everything on travel. So I should be going uh, live in the next 
uh say uh 20 to 30 minutes you know because uh actually i think the guy that i supposed to be going live with probably is in the chat room i'm not sure yet but okay. uh but uh i wait for him to get the uh whole hangouts and everything hooked up for his phone which he should have already and i'll be uh going live in 20 to 30 minutes you know all right, I, cool. all right man all uh right. i left my email in the uh in the chat chat room somewhere man let me uh send me an email man we'll get uh contact bro so that way if i'm in atlanta you could, i could you be used as a double or, or, or extra or something you know i got you man i got you you know i'm putting it, I'm putting it in the chat now But, I, gotta, uh, I gotta get in that whatsapp group again too man don't worry about it tell you what uh my e all right i see it all right what i do is i i t hit you up you just throw your number and then i'll put you back in uh after i get done with the show all right cool man hey so everybody that's watching man go over to Dreezy's channel and check out his live stream that's d-r-e-h-a-r-t dre heart d-r-e-h-a-r-t dre heart I'll be going live in about 30 minutes. All right, cool. All right, peace. All right, man. All right. Peace. WTU. That's what's up. Out.